Hey everyone, so I'm doing my presentation on the Jefferson Cipher Wheel. And what is the Jefferson Cipher Wheel? So it's a mechanical device invented by um, Thomas Jefferson that was designed to encrypt and decrypt messages. So this was invented in the late 18th century, around uh, 1795. Um, Thomas Jefferson was in France at that time, serving at the U.S. Minister to France. Um, and the device was initially created and developed while he was in Paris, actually. All right, so why was it invented? So, it was invented to enhance the security of sensitive and diplomatic and military communications. Um, during Jefferson's, Jefferson's time in France, the United States was involved in various international affairs, and secure communication was crucial to protect um, sensitive information from interception and decryption by foreign affairs. All right, so how it works. Um, so the cipher wheel is a kind of like a cylindrical device consisting of multiple disks with uh, each with letters of the alphabet arranged in a random order. And these disks can be rotated independently, allowing the user to encode and decode messages by aligning the desired letters. Um, and when a message was to be, like, encoded, the sender would align the disk to, be, to a specific starting position, which served as the key for that particular message. Uh, the recipient, who also possessed an identical cipher wheel, would align their wheel to the same starting position to decode that message. So, significant role. So... First, obviously, Thomas Jefferson, he's the inventor. Um, he designed the device and likely used it during his service in France. Um, and then Meriwether Lewis, uh, he's known for the Lewis and Clark expedition. He was a protege of Thomas Jefferson. Um, and he is believed to have the cipher wheel during his expedition to communicate uh, securely with Jefferson who at the time was the president of the United States. Okay, so encry encrypting and decrypting a message using the cipher wheel. Um, it involves aligning the wheels to like a specific starting position, like I said before. So the first thing you wanna do is set the key. So the sender and receiver must agree on a specific starting position for the cipher wheel and this is typically done by sharing a keyword um, that both parties know so for our example we're going to use the keyword secret um, so you want to place the wheel on a flat surface make sure all wheels are aligned in a specific way um, according to the key um, and we would align it like this, like what I have in the example. And also, if you note that all the three wheels are aligned with the key secret. All right, so encrypting the message, you have to look at the outermost wheel and replace each letter in the message with the cor corresponding letter on the wheel. So for example, we would encrypt the message hello using the key secret. So the H correspond with S and then E with E, L, C, L, R, O, E. So the encrypted message is S, R, S, E, C, R, E. <laughs> All right, so decrypting the message. So you align the cipher wheel to the same key used for uh, encryption, which is secret. Then you reverse the process by replacing 
um, each letter in the encrypted message with the corresponding letter uh, on the outermost wheel. Um, so using our encrypted message and the key secret, uh, we can decrypt it. So S uh, corresponds with H E E C L R L uh, E O. So the decrypted message is hello. Okay, so the code breaking efforts for uh, the cipher will. Um, so one of the most common techniques in code breaking is analysis. So in this method, code breaking analysis, analyze, sorry, the frequency with which the letters appear in the encoded message. So in English, certain letters are more common than others. And by identifying those patterns in the encoded text, um, code breakers can make educated guesses about the key and the initial, initial wheel positions. Uh, the second is pattern recognition. So code breakers may also look for patterns in the text. If the same sequence of letters appear multiple times, it might indicate a common word or phrase in the original message. Um, and recognizing the patterns can help um, deducing parts of the key and message content. Uh, also, in cases where the key space is limited, code breakers may attempt a brute force attack by trying all possible keys and wheel positions until they find the one that decrypts the message correctly. Um, but if this key space is large, this method becomes impractical and really time consuming. So, um, and historical context and known, me known methods, uh, code breakers, uh, may also rely on historical knowledge of the cipher and the people who used it. If there are records of how the cipher, um, was used, this information can be, um, invaluable to breaking the code and yeah and then here's my present I mean my citations and